slate. Old friends, new friends, number 201, Lee Strasberg, Family Communications. Unfortunately, you have the slightest idea of what I or the teachers have been telling you. Because the preconceptions is in terms of the result, not of what you have to create. If you don't know what you're going to have to create, you will never in your life create it. For me, whatever step anybody has achieved is always only the prelude to something more. It's an unending series of steps. There's no point at which you get to the top floor. Nobody knows where the top floor is. The first time I met Lee Strasberg was at his home in California. His walls were lined with books and records. In fact, one whole room was filled with nothing but stacks of records. It could have been the home of a musician, or a writer, a professor. The variety of his interests is astounding. Of course, Lee Strasberg is one of the most famous acting teachers in the world. Now in his 80s, he continues to inspire and push and encourage those young people who care about acting, as well as many professionals who have grown up in it. Among the actors who have studied with Lee Strasberg are Paul Newman, Anne Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, Jane Fonda, Marlon Brando, Geraldine Page, Al Pacino, Susan Strasberg, Carl Malden, Joanne Woodward, James Dean, Julie Harris, Montgomery Clift, Lee Grant, Marilyn Monroe, Steve McQueen, Shelley Winters. What I feel about the theater is very simply, it is the art that is closest to reality. Because whereas all the other arts transform reality into a different medium, sound, music, words on a page, you see, painting, and so on and so forth. They capture life but by transforming it onto, not mechanical, but to a totally different medium. In the theater, and that includes the movies too, from that point of view, because to me, that, those are the theater mediums. The living presence of the actor means that you are creating art with the same means that you create life. Unfortunately, you have the slightest idea of what I or the teachers have been telling you. Because the preconceptions is in terms of the result, not of what you have to create. If you don't know what you're going to have to create, you will never in your life create it. It doesn't happen just by osmosis. Even the great actor, it doesn't happen. Even an, an external actor. What? Wake up, you do. <sighs> Who, he, would, he would pretend, but he would know what he's pretending at least. That's it, Daniel. You're doing something now. I don't quite know what, but you are, for the first time, beginning to concentrate. darling it's never gonna be shoved in rehearsal now come on you see how you expect everything else to work for you while you don't work you have to work not the door the door's gonna work all right we have good stage hands don't worry about that if the actors were as good as the stage hands we'd be in good hands the doors will always work at the right time 
if you have picked an incident that has within itself some uh, motivation, it may suggest to you something to do. Otherwise, frankly, you're going to stand there on the stage, you will not know what to do, and the only thing that you will know is to remember the lines. And that is not the way we become actors. The very word acting has nothing to do with memory in that sense. It has to do with what we do, how we behave on the stage, how we make whatever we're doing real. When we sleep, we not only have to lie there, we have to create sleep, which is a sensory reality. When we wake up, we don't really know it's dark in the place and so on. All these things you have to create because the stage is going to be pretty light. So you're not going to get it from the stage itself. You're going to get it only from the way in which we commonly say your imagination creates it. But the imagination is nothing more than all these real things taking place unconsciously. When they don't happen, the imagination doesn't work, the inspiration doesn't work, and the actor is left only with the lines and with what Stanislavski calls the muscles of the tongue. I always feel that, that a real teacher is basically a facilitator. And so consequently, I'd just like to hear about how you feel the, uh, about your students. Uh, uh, it's not always pleasure. Uh, the pleasure, of course, is from their performance. and. To the extent that performance is good, I take a little pleasure in the hope that I may have contributed slightly to it. But, uh, and the work that I do, I'm not so much concerned with the performance now. Talent is like, is a real thing, is a living thing. And it grows, it fades and it grows. And therefore, no matter how good a performance may be, it leaves me unsatisfied because there's always more. For me, whatever step anybody has achieved is always only the prelude to something more. It's an unending series of steps. There's no point at which you get to the top floor. Nobody knows where the top floor is. Well, what things do? What the brain, the brain, the brain has to get into there. Yeah, I've been working on it's it. It's not working on it, darling, because if How you... How can you say that every day I work on it and every day I'm not getting moved, further? If, darling, then you're not doing, obviously, what I ask you to do. It's an impossibility. It's an impossibility for you to do what I ask you to do and not go further. Well, but uh, maybe I'm going further and I don't see it. And, and we see it in the scenes. Okay. But in the, at wait, least, wait, wait, at wait, least, wait, wait, wait. No, it's not at least. Because you've got to become aware of when you're doing what, darling. And there's no point putting on this big act, which is of no value. You are, you are slothful. You are lazy. When you came here, you didn't move at all. Now, for the first time, your impulses are beginning to move. Your sensations, our emotions are beginning to move. And with that, we're beginning to get a little degree of natural, logical movement. Not enough. It was extremely difficult for me in acting class because, on one hand, I wanted what Lee Strasberg, the teacher, had to, to say to me, and I needed that help. And on the other hand, I needed Daddy to think that I was enchanting, adorable, and wonderful no matter what I did. It, um, it was very difficult for me to, uh, let's say, separate or you, and or unite my father as teacher, critic, and father. And at a certain point, I made, and it was a very deliberate choice, that, uh, I would rather keep the relationship with my father. Susan told us that it took her a long time before she was able to realize that you were father first and then teacher after that. And had, had you had some feelings about that as you worked with her? It took me a long time to realize the same thing. In those days, uh, I had a tendency, and I still have in a certain way, to lean backwards whenever I know someone, to be tougher, harsher in a way, try in the effort to be more objective. And uh, with Susan, to a greater extent than with my son John, that came a little later, uh, I was 
I tried to lean back with too much. I had difficulty expressing myself easily, especially in a demonstrative kind of way. And it's one of the things you look back on, there's nothing you can do about it by now, but you try somehow to make amends for that. So it did take me a long time for me to realize that in addition to being a teacher, I was a father and that I could express fatherly concern, uh, which I still have difficulty in doing. Strasberg uh, knows how to push you when you're ready for it. He's very gentle with uh, young people or actors have certain hang-ups. But I've seen him be very tough. I saw him be very tough with Robert De Niro, Bobby. And I saw, I've seen him be very gentle, say, with Jimmy Dean many years ago. And uh, uh, he's kind of, I think a great teacher is like a great pianist. They're very, they have to, they know the notes, but they have to be very intuitive uh, in their interpretation. I think one of the difficulties in life generally is that an educational process tends to emphasize the mental and the memory. Children, for instance, are very creative in the sense that they have reactions to things which are so unusual that we say, oh my God, we, we just glow over it. Look at what he said and look at what he did and look at what he saw and so on and so forth. But then what happens? As they grow older, their observations must begin then to coincide with what we think is the right thing. If they look at a chair and they don't see the chair, but they see something else, we say, what's the matter with you? That's a chair. That's not anything to get frightened of. What are you frightened of? What's the matter with you? Crazy? And so on. What happens then is that the natural responses of the human being begin little by little to settle down to a socially acceptable idea of what things are and should be. But when we come to real creativity, which in a way is in the arts and in life, the sky is the limit, and each human being is a, a complete world of his own. The elimination of tension is valuable, of course, for every human being, not just for the actor. And it would be very important for people to realize that it's not just the emotional stress that they deal with, that we know when we get nervous about something and so on. Relaxation is essential to every human being, but for the actor, it is a necessity. It's much better. I still feel tightness there, but much better. Look at that. Look, I, look at that. I can't open it. You see that? There's tension. The muscles here hold it. This is the most trained area in the human being. Because everything from here goes immediately ready to be spoken. No, the fingers. The fingers, the toes, the shoulders. No, you see? Yeah. You see? That's all that this is, darling. It's no reflection on your talent, which we know. It just shows that much as and wonderful as you may be, you have capacities now which do not coincide with what you're capable of doing. Too much of what you do may be mental. They're not necessarily bad, but not as full, not as vivid. See, I feel there, a little watching too much. You want to know which way. And the actor has to be aware, but it can't be critical. Uh, what's the matter? Wonderful sensitivity, sweetheart, part of which you don't use. The ability to relax becomes the first thing that the actor learns. And in the relaxation, we often see the possibilities of the human being before we see his acting. We see what he's capable of. If he relaxes well, we know that he will be able to concentrate. He will be able to do things that he may not as yet be able to do, but he has that capacity. On the other hand, if he has difficulty in controlling his relaxation, 
then it means that he will never fully use his talent. It is much easier for me to make movies than to do the work that I think to be my major work, which is to help other people. Because I don't have to argue with myself. I don't have to talk to myself. I don't have to convince myself. Whatever I do, I do, and so on, and uh, there's no difficulty. But to try to get somebody else to do what I think he's capable of, to somehow stimulate, because I can't do it, he has to do it, after all. So I can, to stimulate, to hit the right button, the right kind of thing that will ignite in him the thing that I see him to be capable of. That's hard work, let me tell you. And acting for me, therefore, is to some extent a relaxation. Look at this. Is it beautiful? Look at this. Here, it's a private room. Get your meals cooked for you. And this is a greenhouse, huh? Flowers. Look at that. You sit in the sun. And there's a lounge. You've got a television set. You can watch the baseball game. Pa. Huh? You got to play cards, too. Look at this. Play cards anytime you want. You're always complaining about somebody to, you know, to play cards with. Are you listening to me? Where's your car? What? Got your car outside. Yeah, why? I want you to do me a favor. I want you to drive me home, that's all. You don't have to come and see me. Hey, Pa. You haven't got the apartment anymore. What do you mean? Mrs. Kurowski rented it yesterday. You're lying. She can't do that. Your rent was three weeks overdue. It's the law. I know the law. She can't throw me out. Joey, why are you doing this to me? I didn't do nothing wrong. That's my apartment. Come on. I got my things, and you take me. Oh, you can't. There's somebody else living there now. You're lying. I'm not lying. I think he's wonderful. I was surprised. I think uh, when I saw my father and godfather, too, I was really surprised. I, I he had told me he was a good actor. <laughs> well, you know, when he started out, and I know he would kind of talk about that. You know, he was a comic actor also. He did, he started out in Garrett Gaty's. And, but because of the nature of, of his mind and intellect, people, thought of him a certain way. And uh, when I saw him, it really knocked me out, because he was wonderful. He practiced what he preached, which if you realize that a lot of other acting teachers have tried to make that transition, a lot of good acting teachers tried to make the transition back and could not and didn't do it, because there was too much of a dichotomy between what they said and, and the work that they produced. The one thing that when a student comes to me, I always see myself when I was young. Some, something in me, even at that time, was reaching out for something that I myself was not aware of. It's an interesting quality, so I don't want to, frankly, fiddle around with it too much. In fact, even as I say it, I'm, I become moved by those memories. One of the things that is strongest in my memory is my father, whom I never got to know, who was a very simple person. A worker, quiet, not very demonstrative. We were not a demonstrative family. And that was one of the great sadness of my life that I never really came close to him. At the end of his life, when he was dying, and he lived fortunately to a ripe old age, I hope that if I succeed in reaching his age, I'll be doing pretty well. Uh, he asked to have a translation of Spinoza in Yiddish. And yet I had taken him to be just a simple person, not particularly educated, so on. He never really learned to speak English. And once I asked him, I still remember that, and it moves me very much. I asked him, why didn't you ever learn English? I'll never forget his answer. It's a little difficult for me. He said, if I'd known I would live so long, he hadn't expected to live as long. I was born in a very poor environment, and uh, we were part of that phase of uh, American development when people came from abroad. I, too, came from abroad. I was not born in this country. I came here when I was about seven, 
my family had no artistic interest uh, in that sense. <clears throat> there were simple people, what you might call ordinary people, which doesn't mean that they were insensitive, but, but they were simple people. I, and one of the things I hope is that I've remained as simple as they are, that I haven't assumed any phony or other kind of, you know, ways and manners. Otherwise, I would lose my contact with reality and with other people, you see. I would begin to judge them in a different way, a different light. It's difficult for me to describe. I spoke about my father to you. you. It's difficult for me to talk about my mother. I was really very close to my mother because when my father left, that's who my family was, was my mother. And her face, if you saw it, was a very open face. She must have been quite beautiful when she was young. Uh, quite lovely face. And uh, I can't tell you anything special about her. It's just a feeling which is special. Uh, except there are times when you have this strange feeling that she's hovering over you in some strange way. Uh, and what I see usually is her face, very open, kind of kind. She must have fed you in many ways. Yes, I think so, but I, I could not really define what, what the ways are. Maybe there are too many and too deep in that sense and too uh, natural so that they, uh, they're not singled out. It's probably some totality of being in which in some way or other uh, has influenced my own totality of being. So it's really very difficult. It's sometimes like great acting. It's very difficult. Some people say, well, what? She's a great actress. What did she do? You say, well, she's a, she, she was a great actress. Yeah, but then what did she do? We always look for tricks, as if that's the great acting. No, tricks are not the great acting. And when you have to describe the greatest actress, Laura Taylor, Eleonora Dusa, whom I was fortunate to see, you say, well, she didn't do anything. That was the greatness that it wasn't acting in the obvious sense of the word. You couldn't tell that she was acting. There's only one thing that differentiates people, and that's the degree of talent that they have. That does differentiate people. People are in that sense unequal, you see, the degree of talent. But there again, one never knows who will possess the talent, who will become the great artist, or even the great scientist and so on, who will make the great discovery. We don't know, we never know. And uh, one of my favorite maxims is the one that I first learned from the great English artist, Gordon Craig. I think it's taken from Blake, if I'm not mistaken, or Browning. I don't remember uh, wh whom he took it from. It's a phrase that says, a man's reach should exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? I think it comes from Browning. The day after I talked with Lee Strasberg, he was flying from California to New York to give another seminar at his actor's studio there. He was thinking about doing another movie. He was looking over plans for adding other rooms to his school. A man's reach should exceed his grasp, he says, and he likes to show it. Strasberg has obviously thought a lot about the roots of his life. He senses that his mother is always with him. And I wonder if most people don't share his feeling about wishing he could have known his father better. I know I do. And yet I wonder how many people ever do know their fathers well. And I wonder how many fathers ever do know their children well. But the ties that bind parents and children go far beyond all that can be known. We still make a difference in each other's lives. And what a great difference a great teacher can make in the lives of so many. More friends next time.
he is one of the superstars. He has never been given the credit due to him. Last year was the first year that he's been given the credit.